Hi, and welcome back to Hacker 101. In this session, we're going to go over a few techniques for conducting a source code review. Let's start by talking about what to expect from a source review, particularly regarding time requirements. This is especially critical if you're doing a source review in a consulting role. Typically speaking, code review is scoped based on how many lines of code there are to actually look through. Rather than just raw lines in each file, most people will use the clock CLOC, tool, which breaks it down into actual code, comments, and blank line counts. If you're using static analysis tools, which we'll talk about in a moment, then the typical number I hear most commonly is 100,000 lines per person week of effort. I personally can't decide if this number is about right or completely wrong, but it seems to be the most common suggestion. Static analysis tools do greatly reduce the effort required to do a source review like this, but they also tend to spew false positives. Again, we'll talk more about them in a minute. When I look at a project like this, I typically do so without planning for the use of static analysis tools. As such, I prefer a different metric, the number of files in the project. It isn't perfect, but if you check for the big failure cases, some files having a massive number of lines of code, then it works well enough. I personally use a rough estimate of about 10 files per day. The quality of a source code review rests on whether or not you're doing manual review. Using static analysis tools is quick, but there are many classes of bugs that it simply won't find. If you're doing a manual review, you'll make 1% of the progress for your time, but you'll find bugs that are simply impossible to find through static analysis, and a great many that are unlikely to be found that way. This all means that you have a balancing act to perform. It's not at all practical to hand review every line of a huge app, and automated scanning is error prone. As a result, my recommendation is this. If it's less than 100,000 lines of code, use manual analysis with static analysis to assist. If it's greater than that, use manual review only for critical components like authentication, credential storage, and crypto. If you're a consultant, communicating constantly and effectively is of the utmost importance. In most cases, you'll know what you can accomplish in the time frame you have, so communicate that to the client frequently and clearly. Now let's talk about static analysis tools. Fortify is one of the most well-known tools in this realm. What's really interesting about Fortify, to me, is that it actually compiles your code. This requires you have a full build environment, but it means that it can do really deep analysis. For instance, it can find SQL injection across multiple function boundaries. This means that Fortify works pretty well, but its prices start in the five figures and move rapidly upward from there. In addition, it's only really useful for C, C++, C Sharp, and Java, with Java being by far where it shines. As a result of these factors, I don't know of a single independent researcher or consultant who makes use of Fortify. It's simply too expensive for those cases. Now, Checkmarks is a very new tool, but I found it to be very effective for web applications. It as well is primarily useful for Java and C Sharp, though it does support many other languages but it's a fraction of the price of Fortify, and in my experience, it does basically just as well. The interesting thing about checkmarks is that it takes your whole code base and it translates it into basically an abstract syntax tree. This could let you do some really cool things, like find all the entry points and find specific unsafe usages of functions that are specific to your code. Unfortunately, they typically restrict its queries to doing vulnerability scanning, and make this kind of usage difficult. If they open that up a bit, which they're fully capable of doing, there's tremendous potential here. Outside of these, Coverity is an interesting tool, but it isn't great for web apps. Veracode is an interesting hosted service, but you actually give them binaries instead of source code. It's a bit expensive, but I've seen good results. OWASP also has a number of static analysis tools in various stages and levels of maintenance. If you want to become a better hacker and help the community, consider working on those. No conversation around static analysis tools is complete without talking about the big, big downside, false positives. You can get thousands of false positives from even a small code base, making it easy to lose real bugs in the process. Typically, I write a script to verify the bulk of the contents quickly, as most of your false positives tend to fall into a pretty simple pattern. Now let's switch gears and talk about division of labor. 
Source code review projects can be divided effectively with work. There are a couple different approaches one can take. The first approach is to divide the code base into its component parts. For instance, one person could take the web front end code, while another takes business logic. Each person will test their components separate from the others. Progress tracking is generally done by file counts, which as mentioned before, can fall down if you don't look for overly large files. The main issue though, is that many components will take less time than others. So you end up shuffling components between testers all the time. To get around this, have a short daily status meeting to make sure you all stay on the same page. A second approach is to split the project up by vulnerability class. This is typically done when reviewing a large number of findings from static analysis. Each tester chooses a few vulnerability classes and just looks at those. This, personally, is my favorite approach for reviewing static analysis findings. There are many fewer mental context switches. You're looking at SQL I, SQL I, SQL I, etc., then XSS, XSS, XSS. And it's funny to say, but it's almost meditative, cranking through sometimes thousands of similar findings and finding a good rhythm. The big issue with this approach is that it's easy to miss big, high-level structural problems. That said, you'll have the same basic issue with any approach centered around static analysis reviews. Finally, if you're a solo tester, I recommend the approach I mentioned earlier in the session. Split the project up by files and keep track of things that way. It's not perfect, and one of the big issues is that it's hard to perform the exact same analysis on every file you assess. Past a few hundred files, this becomes really hard to scale. At that point, consider another approach and working with other hackers on the project. No matter which approach you take, the most important thing is to constantly measure. Make sure that you stay on track by assessing your progress over time. This will keep you from missing deadlines and let you know if you have time to dive deeper into a given area. One of the things I like to do is dump the file list, along with the line of code count, into a CSV file and then drop that into Excel or Google Sheets. Put a completion percentage on each file along with any notes you may have for those files. If there's more than a dozen files or so, I'll always do this. Before we wrap up, let's talk about some tips and tricks. When I'm doing a large source review, I always pull the source into a Git repository. Then I can modify the source to annotate where things could potentially become issues if triggered in specific ways by other pieces of code. Then I can track those to see if anything could trigger them elsewhere. The nice thing about Git is that your whole team can keep track of their notes in a single place. This cuts down on the work required and increases the number of bugs you'll find. When I'm reviewing a large web app, I first look to see how they query their database, then write a little script to find any such call which is past a formatted string or a concatenation. Generally, this will just find places where queries are split across multiple lines, but it'll also find great SQL I bugs. Most people hesitate to write scripts of this sort, but in my opinion, they're the best possible use of your time. It doesn't need to be perfect, and it only needs to work on the code base in front of you. If it takes a day and cuts off three or four, which it can, then that's a big win. It'll also often give you better results than if you did it 100% by hand. I personally found over 300 SQL I bugs in a single day using this technique, all of which were missed by Coverity. Other things you can easily script. Finding any output to a page that uses the Git or Post super globals in PHP, and finding all the entry points. Sometimes you can even find the authorization checks easily. These can both be done with simple bash scripts. One of the ways I like to do source review is to start from entry points and then go up the tree from there. The two big benefits are that you see the code how it's used rather than how it could be used, and you avoid looking at irrelevant code when all you really care about is how a given entry point works. That's a particularly good approach for web service code, where you have a small number of entry points and a large backend code base. Being able to see just what's relevant is critical in terms of understanding it from a high level. I hope this helped you get a better understanding of the challenges and trade-offs involved with source review. It is a completely different beast from any other kind of testing, but it's truly rewarding when you find those deep, dark bugs. When you spend so much time working with a code base, you really get an understanding of it that can't be achieved in any other way, and it truly shows in the reports. As always, thanks for watching, and happy breaking!